glory. When you walk through the door, the glory of the Lord heals you. The glory of the Lord delivers you. The glory of the Lord sets you free. I want to hear that brother Jingle from your music and the Holy Ghost talk over me.
because he's worthy. He didn't have to make us live tonight. He didn't have to allow us to come in his house and walk through those doors. But tonight, praise God, we're going to just lift up the name of Jesus because he is worthy. And if we all look to him by faith, Daniel, God surely will come through for us. Praise God, we don't want this to be the same ordinary meeting. We serve a God that is extraordinary. We serve a God that do great things. Praise God, we serve a God that is miraculous. Praise God, he is always victorious. Praise God, we serve a great, big, wonderful God in Jesus' name. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God.
Jesus Christ. Amen. Truly, God is good to me. We just sung, we serve a great, big, wonderful God. Yes, he is. Psalms 48 verse 1 said, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation. Whatever it is, God makes it beautiful. Then it will be the joy of the whole earth. What a wonderful God. What a mighty God we serve. What a wonderful Savior we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to sing a song. Bless the Lord Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus.
lift up his name. Praise God, and that's what we're going to do. Praise God, I, I come with no other intention tonight but to lift up the name of Jesus. I come with no other intention tonight but that God will get the glory, but that God will get the praise. As I said, he said, if I be lifted up from this earth, he will draw all men. And we're looking tonight that somebody will be saved, delivered, set free from whatever it is. Because God is here, God is real, God is powerful. Praise God. And right at this time, we're going to share in our testimonies. Praise God. We're going to talk about what God has done for us. All the way to Calvary, he went for me.
God is yes, good, He is real, and He is a forgiving God. Amen. And He go all the way to Calvary. Amen. And the earth, and the Lord, and He saved our soul from sin that we are can redeem and can sing His song. Yes. At this present moment, I've got too many things from me. He can all true lot of situations, some things that yes, He brought me out. Because it wasn't for the Lord, but on my side, I don't know where I'm going today. But thank God for grace. Amen. Thank God for salvation. Thank and thank God. God. When he was on the cross, he remembered yes. someone like me that I can stand and say, God is real and I pray to God. If I, I, I don't even have the tongue and the, and, and, and the word that to say, God, 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 by keeping me to believe that I can come tonight to the list of the prayer and I come to glorify and pray for me, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. We praise the Lord! Praise God! Praise the Lord! Praise God! Praise God. Praise God. You know, tonight I'm grateful. I just want to give honor to the Spirit of God. God passed us sweet saints. You know, God has been so good to me. You know, God has been kept me. You know, one more year to walk to the peace over Praise God. Praise God. God. You know, God has come to give me service. And the purpose I came in here for tonight is to give God some praise. Is to set up the praises yes. and He can send the praise yes. tonight. Because there are so many things happening yes. throughout the year. Yes. So many people die. My God, this is all in charge. And I'm here. Praise because God. You know, nothing good out there. I just want to give God some. So pray for me.
intention but to lift up the name of Jesus. I come with no other intention but that the name of God will be glorified. Praise God. He said if I be lifted up from this earth, he will draw. And if we lift him up tonight, if we forget about our problem, if we forget about what happened yesterday or tomorrow, don't worry about 2022. But tonight, if we set our heart and set our plea on God, we will see a mighty move. We will see a mighty outpouring. Praise God. The word of God said, in the last days, he's going to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Our sons and our daughters shall dream dreams, shall prophesy. Bless the Lord Jesus. We serve a great big wonderful God. He's always victorious. He's always watching over us. A great big wonderful God. Praise God is worthy tonight. He didn't have to make us live. He didn't have to do it. We didn't have to come in his house tonight. But he made it possible. He's a good God. He's a great God. And we want to thank him. Thank him. If you can stand on your feet, thank him. If you can stand on your inner right mind, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We exalt you, Lord. He's the King of Kings tonight. He's the Lord of Lords tonight. The fairest of 10,000 to our soul. Praise God in joy, he's with us. In sorrow, he's with us. In sickness, he's with us. When we are poor, whether we are rich, we are hungry, and we are naked, he's with us. He's a good God tonight. He is a good God tonight. Bless the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Lift him up, brethren. Praise the Lord, church. 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 Praise the Lord, the Savior died. Twas then my Lord was crucified. Twas on the cross he died for me and purchased them.
Reverend Member Ron Parson, all the saints in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that I can be in this house another time. For the past couple weeks, um, this song has just been running through my mind, just to remind me of what God has done for me. I think sometimes as Christians or as apostolic brethren, we can feel so entitled. And it can be a thing where we, it's like we expect God to do stuff, do things for us. But if we think about it, God didn't have to die. He didn't have to come. He didn't have to lay down his life for us. If you think of the worst thing you think you have done, and God died for that. God died that you may have life. And sometimes, because we, when we, even when we pray to God, when we um, pray to him, we just need to be careful because we can't keep coming to God and being like, God, do this. God, do that. God, do this. We need to find some time to say, God, thank you. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you that you had mercy on me because God didn't have to do anything. And um, this week, um, I was reading the Bible. I was reading in Ezra 3. Um, in church, when we're talking and I'm hearing about like the former glory and how church used to be and how we want to get back to that. And I was really looking to that and then I was reading in Ezra 3. And it says, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy and joy forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off. And I was looking into it and I was wondering why the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers, the ancient men, why they were weeping when other people were rejoicing. And then I read in, um, I read in Leviticus 9 when Moses and Aaron, they were preparing a sacrifice and they put up the peace offering, they had the sin offering and they had the wave offering. And they said that when they finished doing everything they did to put the sacrifice down, they said the glory of the Lord came. And I'm looking into this, the reason why the people of old were crying out is because they were expecting the glory of the Lord to come and it didn't come. The new people that came out of exile from Babylon, they came out of exile and because they weren't used to the glory, they, because the foundation was laid, they thought it was something to worship about. They thought it was something to praise about. But if you look into it, the people of old, they were crying out because they knew that, that was, it wasn't just that. Amen. And if you apply it to the church today, yeah. us new, new converts or new people coming into church, they feel like it's, it's nice to hear, the, to hear the singing, it's nice to hear the shouting, it's nice to hear the worship and the preaching. But Grandma Pastor and those of old that have seen the old glory of the Lord are saying this is not it. We need to get back to God. And when you look into it, it's not just, I'm just asking God to help me because it's a thing where when we come into the house of God, everyone has to have the same mind. The same thing that Grandma is expecting is the same thing that I should expect. It doesn't matter if she's been in the gospel as long as me, or as um, longer than me. The same thing Grandma Pastor wants is the same thing that I should want. We should all come with the same desire. But in the Bible, what happened was the new people, and they came in, they were like, oh yes, Lord, yes. Um, they were worshiping the Lord, his goodness, mercy, and joy forever. But the, old, the older ones that came for time, they didn't have any time to praise God. They were like, God, please. They were crying out for mercy. Yeah. I'm just asking God that we have the same mentality, we have the same mindset when it comes to him. And yeah. I was also reading again in, um, in the, um, 1 Kings 8, I think it's verse 10. Um, and what happened was, when they were laying out the sacrifice, it was with King Solomon, when they were laying out the sacrifice, I just want to get the verse, sorry. Yes. Yes. And it says, And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. So before this, the priests, what they did was they made a way so that they can sacrifice to the Lord. And then it says, when they came out of the place, the holy place, which is here, this is a holy place, yeah. that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Yeah. And this is, the next verse is exactly what I, what I want to happen. 
It says, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. And in Ezra, the people of old, that's what they wanted to happen. The people of old, they were expecting for the cloud to come and for the glory of the Lord to fill the house. But because it didn't come, they were weeping and they were asking God and they were crying out to God because that's what they wanted. And I'm asking God to help us because when God is in the place, I haven't got any time to speak. No one has any time to sing. Nobody has any time to preach. Because when God is in this place, I cannot stand to minister. It's God that comes and ministers before his people. I'm really asking God because when you think about it, with Grandma Pastor and she's crying out, and sometimes we wonder, God, why are we, why are we crying out for mercy? Why are we crying out for mercy? And we can be so oblivious to the fact that God is not getting praise. Because we are clapping and we're singing and the music sounds nice, we think that that's it, but God is not getting praise. When we come in and, for example, when we're singing and we're happy, and then Grandma Pastor comes in and she sings something and she reminds us and gets us to think. Sometimes you'll be in church, you're like, but Grandma, we're having, it was, it was so good, like, why, why did you kind of like, it's like you brought us to think, why can't we just praise God? And because that's not it. Yeah. Grandma knows that that's not what it's about. Yeah. Grandma wants, Grandma wants, and what we all should want, is that when we come into his presence, and we stand to minister before God, we're asking God that, I don't want to minister. I don't want Grandma to minister. I want it to be God in us to minister. I don't want it to be a thing where I'm speaking of self, but I want to stand before his presence. And I just want to, I just want to be, I just want to stand. The song says, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. When we come into God's presence and it's like, we, I, I know that it's, I know it's not it. I don't, I don't, I didn't have to be there then for me to know that this is just not this. I want to stand amazed in his presence that when I, when I come and I sing, like I can't sing. I just kneel down and even the angels, they said that they cried holy. That's what they could say. What they could say was holy. When they think about the presence of God and how powerful God is, they didn't have any time to be talking. They didn't, all they could say was holy. I just want to stand amazed in the presence of Jesus. I just want to be able to stand in his, in his presence. And for, for me to, not, it's not, maybe not a physical cloud, but for me to just feel the presence of God. So much so that I can't sing. The musicians can't play. Nobody can preach. Because we're just standing and we're just thinking, God, you are good. Good isn't even a good enough word. Amazing isn't a good enough word. God has done so much for us. For us to come into his presence. And for us to just sit here and act like this is it. Brethren, God is so angry. God is so angry. Because when he wants to come and for us to come and for him to get glory, we just come and we just clap and we just dance and we just sing like that is it. That is not it. God desires more. God needs more. Brethren, I'm seeking God because I don't want to come church and waste my time. I'm tired of wasting time. God desires truth in the inward part. And when you come in church and you clap and sometimes you can be so full up of sin. And instead of you coming to church and the first thing you're saying is, God forgive me. You just stand up and clap and sing and play music and, and dance or do whatever. Like that's the way it is. The, the, when it happened with, when they used to sin back in the day in the Bible, they'll kill your whole family. Your house will be turned into a dung hill. They'll kill all your animals, they'll kill everything. And yet we feel like we can come into a holy place, which it is. But it's because it's not, this ground is a holy place. It's always been a holy place. The way it is, we come in and we pollute it. We pollute it with sin, we pollute it with malice, we pollute it with envy, we pollute it with strife. And then we want to blame the church. It is not the church. In you, Christ built a church. And if that church within you, if you're all polluted, and if you're not coming to God and saying, God forgive me, God please have mercy on me. And you, then when you come in and when you don't get the healing you want, you don't get the job you want, then you're angry at God. When you came in and you were defiled and you came and you tried to give God praise with a dirty sacrifice. That's why I thank God for grandma because every time we come into, come into God's presence and it's like we sing so wild, we don't understand what we're doing. Grandma Pastor will bring us back. The people of old, the ancient men that are weeping and are praying to God and supplicating. I'm asking God to help us because while they're supplicating, when they're dancing and acting and everything's okay, it is not okay. God is angry. And I'm just asking the brethren to please pray for me because the husband man must first partake of the fruit. I don't want to talk and minister and then myself is a cast out. 
but please, brethren, I'm just asking you to really look into this verse and say, when it said, Uncle, verse 10, please, look into these two verses. When it says that, when it says that, I just really want the church to look into these two verses because this is exactly what we need. And I, I, I don't want it to be a thing where it happens one time and then it just goes away. I want it to be a continuous thing. The Bible says, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. This is, the, this is holy ground. Outside, round the back is holy ground. Everywhere is holy ground. When we used to stay over church and upstairs, when we used to pray upstairs, they'll be shouting hallelujah because yeah. even though church is not going on, it is still a holy place. Yeah. It says, and it came to pass when the priests will come out of the holy yeah. place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Yeah. That is God's presence. We want God's glory to come down. And it said, so that the priests, so that I, so that grandma, so that you, we cannot minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Yeah. Reverend, please, this is exactly what we want. We don't want to be in the way. I don't want to stand in the way of God. Because I would want, oh God, can you please do this to me, do this to me. But I'm standing in his way because I'm so defiled, I'm so unclean. And I forget that this is, a, this is holy ground. I come in like, like it's a recitation, like it's something that is, it's just like a routine to just come in and to just sit down and to just clap our hands and to praise God. No, every day we come into his house, we should, the glory of God should come down. So much so that when sick come to that door, when people that need deliverance come to that door, that just by, I don't have to come and pray and pump and push you and in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I don't have to do that. When you walk through the door, the glory of the Lord heals you. The glory of the Lord delivers you. The glory of the Lord sets you free. And it's by your own faith. When you come to the altar, it's not about the evangelists praying for you. They can help you. They can help you. But if you do not believe, how can you get your deliverance? In John 11, when Lazarus was sick and he, um, he was um, dead, and in my own words, she was like, God, if you were here sooner, then he wouldn't have died. But God said, in the Bible, he said, I am glad for your sakes that I wasn't there, lest you had believed. God wants to heal somebody. God wants to set somebody free. I don't understand why God wants to set us free, and yet it's like we want to stay bound. God wants to heal, God wants to deliver, God wants to set free. But because we, are, because we want to stand in the way of God, because we don't want to change, because we, want to, we don't want to get back to the old landmark, because we want to be so comfortable yeah. with this, in this state, that's why God can't get the glory that he deserves. Because we're not recognizing that when we come into his place, it's a holy place. Because we're not recognizing that every time we walk into his sanctuary, we should be giving sacrifice of joy. When we come into his, when we come into his sanctuary, it shouldn't be a thing where I come in and I should be, I'm clapping my hands and I'm looking at this brother, I'm looking at the sister, I'm looking at what they're, what they're thinking about. It's not about that. It's not about anybody else. It's just about God getting glory. And when we come into his place, when we turn to God, and when we recognize that this is a whole, this is holy ground, round the back, everywhere is holy ground, that's when we won't be able to minister. And that is when the glory of the Lord will fill the place. And that's when the cloud will fill the place. Brethren, please continue to pray for me. Pray that God will help me in Jesus' name. No, no one.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God says, be still and know that I am God. He is God. Praise God. And without him, we can do nothing. If he doesn't come in our presence, then it is vain for us to even come before him and lift up a, a sacrifice that is full of blemish. Praise God. We don't want to be rejected, brethren. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God has spoken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The word of God said, let he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise, Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I greet our pastor and all the saints in Jesus' name. I'm giving God thanks for life, strength, and health that can be in this house one more time. Um, as Sister Karen was speaking, I was just thinking that it's God speaking through her. All day yesterday, all day the day before, I was thinking the exact same thing. Very, I said to God, I said, God, if you will, I should speak tonight. This is what I was saying. And she said, everything that I had in my mind to speak. And I'm just praying for that you will continue to pray for us, that God will continue to use us. Amen. But one thing that, um, that, that, that stuck with me, Reverend, is that um, I remember in 2017, I went to Jamaica. And there was a night, and you know, very like the night of music, and I was just there dancing and everything. And the, the people there, and then one song that started to sing was, you can walk as you like, you can talk as you like, but you can't go as you like. And it says, for the angels in heaven are there to reject you. You can walk as you like, you can talk as you like, but you can't go to heaven. And then pastor, one of the officers and those that have been led by God, says one thing, we speak and we follow for a little while, you say yes, yes, yes for a little while, but we come right back to the same thing. And I'm looking into it for myself, and as Sister Karen said, I'm not a talker, and honestly, I'm not like talking, talking, because as we know, talk is cheap, and the living is the example. But it's so easy for us to be disobedient. Just alone for Pastor saying, let's pray. Yeah. And we will sit in down the and wait a different part, different part. But God has already spoken. Yes. And I'm speaking for myself that even yesterday I was in, the, in my bed and I was saying, I'm tired of hearing the woman came with the stick and said, if God is in this place, God is in this place. I'm tired of hearing it. Not, not in no way against grandma. I'm tired of hearing it. And I'm saying, I've been in church 23 years. I personally haven't seen it myself since I've been in here. But I keep hearing about, I hear about the woman, I hear about when Bishop was here and he said, read the clock. I wasn't here, I've been here 23 years, but I haven't seen none of that. I'm tired of hearing that. I only hear Brother Howard was in the spirit and three brethren in the back. They came right to the altar and gave their life to God. I only hear that Brother Jane was on the music and the Holy Ghost talked over me. Yeah. And the word of God says, obedience is better than sacrifice. That law 
know is deep revelation. So right, so deep yeah. of praise into the house of the Lord. Yeah. We offer up to you a sacrifice. But it's no perfect for us to bring this sacrifice if we're disobedient to the Lord. Yeah. A pastor comes in, day in, day out, and burn. I'm looking for my soul. I'm saying, God, wherever it is that I'm being disobedient about, show me. It's just a small disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the pastor said, do this. Do this. What's yeah. well, he Not even just pastor. The word of God says that we should listen to our elders. Yeah. Wherever that could be, whether they're in the church, whether they're older than you, but they're elders to us. Yeah. And that's for us, brother, to listen and to take heed. Yeah. Like, even those that are younger than you, the Bible says a little child shall lead them. Yeah. If you hear something that is going against that, going with the Bible, and that you know that God is using a person, how much? Brother, let's just be obedient. Yeah. And again, talk is cheap. Talk is very cheap. But brother, the same word was on my heart that I'm praying that God will help us all be obedient. Amen. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. If you hear any word this meeting, brother, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So please keep me in your prayers. Please keep moving you from your prayers, brother, because as you can see, the devil don't like much. I was saying to my mom today, I said, Mom, do you think you'll be in the same position that you're in if you were growing up in our time? She said she don't know. Because that's the truth, she don't know. And, and even if I think about it, the grandma, the grandma's camera in your times, if you're growing up in our times, you may not know what you're in and you start saying. Because nowadays, the little thing that you go away with, they won't get away with now. And the little small things that 20 years ago was like, oh, you can't do this, you can't. Oh my God. Now it's all over in the public, in the newspapers, on the Instagram, on TV. And the temptation is everywhere, brethren. So we need an extra, extra layer of holiness in our life, an extra layer of anointing. The Bible says that we have to have more anointed than our fathers. And brethren, the evil day is coming, and the evil day is here, where we have to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Bible says that if one can talk, ten, one can talk, one can chase a thousand, but two put ten thousand to fly. Very few of the numbers. One person, just one thousand demons. Yes. You can see how the devil is rampaging. Two brethren, yes. and there's ten thousand demons. Yes. Ten thousand, that's not one, two little lying spirits. Yes. Ten thousand legions yes. that are all in the world. And it's for us to have a light that when we go out there, just our presence alone, so somebody can't come near us. Yes. Because the so yes. in us. And somebody can't come, it's like, mm, they can't come around. Yes. And the spirits that can't come into sanctuary because the Holy Ghost will slip up the side. I don't mean speaking tongues that grab and pull down. Yes. But that the Holy Ghost will convince you right yes. to come in. I can't come in here any and anyhow. I can't oh, do it. Man. I can't do it because I know that God will destroy me. Yes. I can't get away with certain things that other people get away with. I know that because I've seen it. I try certain things I get caught. I try this and the people with me, yes. I get caught. Yes. I can't do it. Yes. So I know that there's a mark on my life. Yes. My name will be shown. Yes. That the fruits of the Spirit will be shown through my living. Yes. Because as yes, I said, talk is easy, brethren. But the Bible says that we should have the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, yes. patience, temperance. Yes. All of these things, brethren, we need. And that's what we get when we read the word. Yes. When we fast and we pray and we deny our soul. So these are my few encouragements, brethren, to the church. Please continue to pray for the young people. Please continue to pray for the young people, yes. brethren. The devil is trying hard. The devil is trying strong. Amen. If you look know, big by big, I look at that video from page 19. The whole choir full of us with the young people are seeing. Big by big, the devil's taking us one by one, one by one. And he's trying to be smart with it. He'll separate you. When he separates you, then he cuts off the telephone line for you and your brethren. So, oh, they don't want to talk to me. They don't want to touch. They don't want to touch. And you don't look into yourself. And when you start looking into yourself, you start saying, oh, the church. But it is. But then this, but that, not realizing that the devil's cutting off the telephone line to your supply of help. The devil's cutting it off. And we in ourselves say, oh, but the virgin, the virgin. But it's the devil cutting it off. And probably that's why the devil's so smart and cunning. In the Bible in Genesis 2, it speaks about when the serpent was beguiled Eve. He said that it came suddenly. And I look at the word where it means a web. When you, when you translate it from Latin, it means a web. And I'm saying the devil is like a web. When you look at a web, brother, I was in my car the other day, and I'm driving, driving, see something.
something glimmering in the light. Have you ever heard about something glimmer? I see there's a web in the car. But I didn't see it. It's only because the light was there to show me the web. That's why we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost in ourselves. That when the web is there, we can see the trap.
to come up. The young adults and the youth come up and sing now. Ain't no giving up. I've got to go on. So
job I was to carry on. All I can say is Amen. For the past couple of weeks, the song has been in my mind. It says, if you only knew the blessings that salvation brings, never stay away. If you only knew, if you only could see the table spread with lovely things, you will come to the feast today. And then the song goes on to say, for the door is open wide, and the Saviour bids you come. There is nothing that you have to pay. Just be wise and step inside, and don't be like those who threw their lovely chances away. And if you really listen or really um, understand the words where it says, for the door is open wide, and I was thinking about it, and I said, God, the door isn't going to be open all the time. There's going to be a time where the, where the door is going to be shut. Now, COVID is a true example when we thought that we were going to be able to come into the building and the doors were shut. And you know, in the book of, I think it's in Isaiah, the Bible says, Seek the Lord while you may be found. Call upon him while he is here. Because there's going to be a time when you're going to want to call him, but he is not going to be found.
let the word go through one ear, come out through the next. But let us reflect that God can help me to be an example to those that are coming in. That like, they can see that through, even through me being here, yes. that you know that the glory of God again will come yes. in. Yes. God. And just going back to um, Saint Matthew 20, 22, you know where it says, "For many are called, but few are chosen." Not everybody is going to accept this call, but it's for us that when we hear the word, that we will accept it. And I just Amen. want to say to somebody today that uh, we've heard it. Accept the Lord yeah. while you, as it says, seek the Lord while you may be found. Amen. Call upon it while he is near. Amen. And again, while you have time, accept the Lord yeah. in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord and the word of God said, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear. Yes. And if we know that we're far from God, if we know that we need a touch from God, if we know that we need deliverance from God, Amen. if we know that we need forgiveness from God, whatever your situation may be, whatever your heart cry may be, come to him right now. Yes. It's a safe to pray for you, but when you come, come believe him. Yes. Say the word of God said, that come to God must first believe. A lot of times we don't get the deliverance, we don't get the blessing, we don't get the healing, as our brother and our sister was saying earlier because we don't believe. We're not coming to me, we're not coming to our past, we're not coming to the person. You're coming to your Father, which is Jesus Christ himself. So if you need prayer, whatever you need, come to him right now, and you'll go out deliverance in Jesus' name. Have you any prayer for Does anyone need deliverance? Anyone need a touch from him? As he knocks and at me. Can we pray for somebody tonight?
back tomorrow. Amen. Come back tomorrow, please. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Free to another go We're in the Spirit of God. Amen. I hope somebody feel in the bed tonight. Hallelujah. I wish the power of God come down in somebody's soul. In Jesus' name.